Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Minecraft series. We are on week 19. How y'all doing? I hope you're doing well. So yeah, week 19. We're almost up to 20, which is actually quite impressive, to be honest. I didn't realize I've been doing this for 20 weeks, but nonetheless, let's get into what we got planned for this week, shall we? So as you can see on this list, I actually have a few of the items that I had last week on here, and I do actually plan on getting these done this week, that's kind of why they're at the top. But I also have on here an advancement, which is Feels Like Home, which I remember correctly is to take a Strider into the overworld and take it across a 30 length lava pool, or strip. Then we've got things like, I have plans for a villager trader building, which I actually had written down on this list future plans a while ago but i have actually got an idea of it which i'll show you guys later this week and then we also have things like i want to see if we can collect some goat horns because currently if i recall correctly we have three of them and i think there's like nine i might be wrong there might be more and then we also have to fix the gold farm on here which you might have not known that that was an issue and i would like to show you why when we get around to that but for the time being on this list what do you think we're actually going to do first and if you thought that we're going to go ahead and start work on the wither skeleton farm because i talked about it at the end of last week I'm sorry to say you are wrong because I'm currently trying to avoid that as much as possible right now because that is just going to take up a lot of my time. But no, in reality, I am actually planning on going ahead and getting this advancement. I'm starting off with an advancement just like last week. The only issue currently is I have no plan of how to get this advancement, so we're kind of just winging it from here. But we need to go to the nether, so let's head over there. Now, if I recall correctly, though, we have a strider somewhere around here that I want to use for this advancement. I see you. Alright, let's sleep. Because now we need a 50 block line of lava. Which is easier said than done. Right, do we think this will work? Alright, so I'm gonna go over here, and we're just gonna walk across like this, and hope that this works. Yep, feels like home. There we go, finally. And now, because he's done such a great job, we're gonna get him back. Get him back in, and hopefully back into to an actual lava pool. And this track of lava is just gonna stay here. Hey, buddy. I'll walk you over there, don't worry. Alright, go towards the lava. Be free, my friend. Not to... Why you... Oh, end. There you go. Bye! Enjoy your life. Thank you for your help. And after that ordeal with the Strider, uh, we can now go ahead and mark that off on our list. And we can now go ahead and start working on other things on this list, of course, out of order, because that's just who I am. Now, what I want to work on next actually is going to bring us over into my creative world to kind of show you plans I've been making behind the scenes, because I actually have been working on ways that we can go ahead and fix our gold farm, as well as I want to make a villager trader haul for a while. And and I just never really knew how I wanted to do it or how I wanted to build it. And so when it comes to that, I thought it'd be a good idea for us, or at least for me, to show you kind of what I'm thinking the floor plan might kind of look like. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hop into our creative world and I will see you guys over there. And all right, the first thing I'm going to show you guys actually over here is a way that I hope that might fix our gold farm. Now, this might not actually seem like a lot currently. This is just a few hoppers connected to some dispensers and barrel. And you might be wondering, like, what is this? Well, let me show you what's actually inside of these things. If we go into here, 
There we go. There is a golden sword in here, as well as we go into here, there are stackable items. You got gold nuggets, gold ingots, run and flesh. The redstone was just a test in here, don't mind that. But you might notice that these five items are things that you can get from a gold farm. Now, currently an issue that I've been running into with a gold farm is the fact that the swords takes so long to go through the system they end up just not going and getting it fed into our burner as soon as possible and it starts clogging up the system at that choke point so my hope is that if i go ahead and get it down to just being in the stacked items immediately then it will hopefully help the choke point i thought about it that might not help it and we might end up just having to make like three different storage systems for this whole thing not three sorry four but this way it gets rid of the swords faster and you might be wondering how it does that and i'm not going to be throwing uh, a full stack of each of these into this system i'm just going to be throwing like eight into here so let me go ahead and do like sword eight run flesh eight gold nuggets actually we'll go ahead and make it uh somewhat different numbers as well not too different but you know so all these are getting thrown down into here they're getting taken by the minecart as you can see they're getting fed into here all items the sword got sword or not just sword but the swords got thrown into this area while the stackable items got thrown into here and the way this works actually is the fact that you have a barrel right here two comparators this one doing the subtract method for this one like this one is taking the total of weight of this barrel and this comparator is subtracting it from this hopper so that when these are equal this powers the redstone torch gets turned off which in line turns this off and then this hopper gets unpowered so it unlocks and it drops the sword in here because the sword is the item that is currently being checked for and this wouldn't work if there was any of these items because these items are a little too weak because they are stackable so that is the whole thing with this system now i want to actually go ahead and show you the villager trading hall as you might actually be able to see it right now but i want to show you what my plan is for it and this is the bare bones thing of the villager trading hall as you may see there are different positions for villagers i believe i have it so that there's like two groups of five on both sides and if you go up here there's also another five and there was planned to be another five but i kind of got tired of building this because in the theory it should work but for the time being i just didn't want to keep building it and don't get me wrong also the design's not bad in my opinion like i like the copper a bit but it also i feel needs a little bit of a redesign but i digress as you may be wondering how this works also apparently chirps playing in the background uh we go ahead and we walk up to this guy and well it's a butcher we can either buy some emeralds for raw pork chops or we can go ahead and buy uh, some rabbit stew for some emeralds so if i go ahead and spawn in some emeralds and then trade him for the rabbit stew i can go ahead and i can just do a control q just to kind of keep throwing the rabbit stew and i bought all of it and you might be wondering okay why did i just throw all that well the villagers will be standing on some iron bars in this area also you know you get the experience but they'll be standing on iron bars so any items that get thrown into the back wall will go into this water stream and consequently be flown into the same place so there's all of our rabbit stew and currently the reason why i have this as a uh, 10 and 10 up there and they'll you know, of course be a symmetric 10 and 10 over here is because i went ahead and looked this was mainly designed for the librarians just to see how many enchanted books there were in the game and i believe the count comes to being about 37 books uh obviously not including things like soul speed and swift sneak because you can't get those from trading with villagers but all the other books total up to being 37 so i thought it would just be nice to write it off to 40 because then i can have the row up there be 10 row down here be 10 and then there'd be four of these so it'd be 40. that is a simplified idea of this though because obviously that's not going to be the same case for all the villager uh job titles i guess 
So I want to go ahead and do some more research on the villagers before I decide to go ahead and start building this, just to kind of figure out how many spots I need, uh, how many sections of this do I need, because this is just one section, this is for librarians, and what jobs I actually want and what villager trades I want, because, well, like, I'm not going to go ahead and get, like, the armor smiths, the tool smiths, the weapon smiths. Like, I looked at those guys and I was like, if I want those tools, weapons, or armor, I will make them myself. Those aren't that bad stuff like these books that i can only get through enchanting or finding them it might just be nice just to have the trade for them so yeah now with that whole dialogue out of the way let's go back into our actual world and we'll go ahead and implement this little thing hopefully over into our gold farm all right so now that we're actually up here we need to tear out most of this just to get our area i guess decluttered for us to actually work in so that means all the composters all the hoppers the spaghetti monster the chests are also gonna have to move which is gonna be kind of hard because we've got a lot of raw flesh in here as well as well i thought we had a lot of gold in here but i forgot i kind of took that away so i guess just the run flesh is what we need to move uh so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna destroy all of this and then i am I'll go ahead and build one of the devices, and I will then just show you what it looks like with all four of them in place. Does that sound good? I hope it does, because that's the plan. Well, that's not great. All right, well, I need to go ahead and reinstall that one. All right, so don't mine out the hopper there. Gotcha. Alright, and now I've made the spaghetti monster arguably worse than what it was beforehand, but I think this might actually work. Uh, as you can see in one of these modules, we have the whole system that I showed you guys earlier for it to actually detect whether it is a sword or a stackable item. Uh, the stackable items will flow into this hopper from this hopper over here, which will go and flow down into these chests on the side. Uh, and that is the same for all of these positions. Then over on the sword side of things, we have the hopper from into a dropper which currently i have just connected to two observers uh this will probably be changed in the future but right now i just kind of want to make sure that this thing works before i completely go ahead and put all of my eggs into this basket now the last thing to go ahead and do is just let this thing run for a while and we'll see if it fixes the issue of getting things stuck in the little pits that we have here so let's get this started Nope, there we go. that guy goes. See, so yeah, I'm going to run this for a little bit, and I will let you guys know if this fixes it or not. Oh, no. Oh, the torches are going off too fast. So everything's just burning. That's not good at all. This worked. And all right, this actually isn't too long after the little test that I did. This, I think I only did this for maybe like five to ten minutes. It might be not even that. And let's just show off what we ended up with. So as you can see in here, obviously we have the round flesh, the gold nuggets, and the gold ingots, of course. You know, it actually worked. And there's no gold swords in here. They're might be a gold sword in here or two yeah there we go and so you might be thinking yeah no this worked out flawlessly like this looks stupid but it actually does work but man do i really wish that was the case because i forgot that minecraft has a slight issue when it comes to redstone and you might be wondering what that issue is uh when it comes to redstone and it's one word directionality see here's the thing while the redstone th does actually work over here and i believe yeah they're like already you might see the issue that this large chest has none of the items as well as this chest has none of the items but this chest has items too also why do these look so similar they literally have exactly nine gold ingots and almost the same amount of whatever but yeah that means that this redstone doesn't work 
this redstone doesn't work, but this redstone works, and this redstone works, all because they're all facing different directions. Bojang, why do you do this to us? So I guess for the time being, yes, we do actually get this to kind of work, where we end up with at least half the drops, and even then, for only a few minutes, this is actually pretty good, and as I said, that doesn't get locked up with all the uh, gold swords, but... I'd also rather go ahead and see if I can get these sides to work as well. But seeing as how long it took me to go ahead and create this design, I'm not expecting that to happen for a very, very long time. But oh well. We'll, we'll consider this being done for this week for the time being, but let's not focus too much on that right now. Because now, I would like to finally go ahead and start working on the Woodless Skeleton Farm that I've been talking about for a few weeks now. And as you may have seen in the beginning of this episode, I went ahead and mined a bunch of stone uh, from a little bit of a crater that I'm making at the moment. Which, that purpose, I've already talked about, but we'll, we'll check it out at some point. Thank you, Ola. I appreciate it. But the, all this stone will be used to make the Wither Skeleton Farm, as we're going to be using it to slab over the entirety of the nether area. Because what we need to do is we need to slab over an 128 radius in the nether. Now the thing with that is that is going to take a lot of time, and I honestly don't have that much time this week. So we're going to go ahead and put maybe like an hour, an hour and a half into slabbing over the nether, see how far that gets us, and well... We'll just see where we end up with that. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this and we'll get started. And alright, now that we're here, we need to figure out a 128 block radius from this position. And we'll go ahead and slide over that much. Oh, for the love of... Alright, so this block is at 875 and 107. So 128 from 875 would be... So 1,003, and then 235 for Z, and then negative X, 747, or negative Z would be negative 21. And it's going to be a 19 by 19 from this point, so we'll start slabbing it here. Oh boy, this is gonna take a lot longer than I thought. So yeah, we actually did end up slapping for... It actually took about an hour and 15 minutes to just go ahead and see how many slabs I could put down. As you can see, obviously I didn't do everything, and there's some areas, obviously, that, you know, there's no slabs. But I went through most of the Nether Fortress. The Nether Fortress isn't completely slabbed due to the fact that I didn't get, like, the top areas. You can barely see it but down there. But you can see inside, uh, if I go ahead and pull out a spyglass, you can see that there are stone slabs inside, just not the, on the tops. And when you come to how many times I used items, you can now see that I have already placed 7,544 stone slabs. Oh, uh, I forgot how big of a project this is going to be. But that's going to be an issue for another time because what I was thinking is that I'm going to go ahead and slab over the nether a bit by bit between weeks and you'll get to see me do it a little bit in the beginning of episodes but otherwise I'm going to do this on my own time so it does not take up any important episode time. So that sadly means that the Wither Skeleton Farm is obviously going to be in a hiatus, but, you know, what are you going to do? So now what we'll go ahead and do is we'll head back into the overworld, and it is time to look for another ancient city. Which, by the way, we're just looking for an ancient city. We're not going through it because A, I don't have enough time, and B, I do not want to go into an ancient city after what happened, I think, either two or three weeks ago. So I will see you guys, well, you'll see if I find a deep dark, and you'll see if I find an ancient city. That's basically what you will end up getting to know.
Here is another one. Can I get down here safely without triggering anything? Well, is the question. I mean, if I trigger it once, it's not going to be that bad. And yeah, I can tell I haven't been here because there's a chest. All right. But all right, cool. It actually makes things easier for next time, even though I am terrified of being here at the moment for obvious reasons. All right, now we got to go and tunnel back up. All right, and now we found the ancient city. We're not going to be going through it this week because, as I said before, it's already late in the week. And uh, again, I want to go ahead and avoid going through it just for the time being because of what happened last time. But we will go through this next week. So don't worry about that. However, now the last thing we have on this list is goat horns. And you might be wondering why I'm going to go ahead and spend time going to go get goat horns. And it literally just boils down to I want them. That is all. Also, because I had never really had all the goat horns and i think it'd be kind of cool just to have them and i think we can go ahead and find goat horns actually right next to where we found the ancient city so i'm going to look through here see if we can find some goats and i will return back to you when i find some goats whether it be here or in a different area well that was easy so what we need to do is we need to get these goats into this hole that's the hope at least how hard is that going to be i don't know they're goats oh please okay I, okay, we're taking the manual approach to this. Hello, this is uncomfortable. Manual approach is that. Hey, we got it. <laughs> that worked. Uh, that's actually quite funny. That that worked that fast. Hey, buddy. Uh, if you want, you can jump out. And that methodology is going to be how we end up getting all the other goat horns because that's really all I can do unless I want to go ahead and try to find more uh, pillager outposts and just kind of get lucky with the four other goat horns. However, with the four other goat horns, they are only gotten from a 2% chance of spawning a screaming goat. So that's going to be a little bit harder to do. And because I don't know of any location that has Scream Goats at the moment, I am sadly going to be calling it this week here. So while we did end up actually getting to everything on the list, we do have a lot of unfinished business that I am planning on hopefully getting some progress done on next week. But nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this week. Thank you guys for watching. You guys take care. Have a great week. And I will see you guys hopefully in the next one. Alright, and thanks, and bye bye